So everything wrong with a 6.5 diesel. Now these were the older GM diesels that were used from 1990, early 90s, I believe, up until 2002 was the last year that they used them. Now I don't want to be that channel that gets to harp on everything that's wrong with it. I'm just saying some experiences that I've had um, and also from uh, colleagues of mine that work on them every day just to share our input if you're looking into buying one of these what you're going to get into. Um, they used them for a decade and they must be reliable enough that the US Army used them in all the Humvees and they were also in marine applications so um, that, that, that says something. If it's only in one platform for a few years then you know it's a it's a bad engine. <coughs> Six four. The biggest thing with these engines is the transition between a strictly mechanical engine over to an electronic injection system and with anything new th th they break. So um, there was a lot of updates on these injection pumps and that's the biggest complaint with these engines uh, by themselves. The truck itself is a good platform. It's a well-built truck. The square bodies I don't have any issues really with any of the trucks from the 90s. They were all they were all well better built than I find in the in the newer millennium um, the big thing is with this injection pump is that it had a lot of updates and the first update involved them to rebuild it do an update to it and put a little blue tag on the back to tell you that it was updated that update didn't cure the problem so the next update inv involved them taking that tag off but not replacing it with anything so if you're looking to buy one of these trucks and you don't see a tag about an inch long on the back of the injection pump you don't know if it's ever been updated or if it's already had multiple updates on it if you do have the blue tag on it it means that it's had one update on it and it's due for a couple more um, some of those updates included moving the black box which is a common problem it changes the governor on the injection pump and it was um, too close to the engine where it was getting too hot so an update for that was relocating it on top of the intake and that seemed to cure a lot of the issues the little black box is kind of the main culprit on this engine that goes. So if your engine light's on, it's as simple as putting, putting it on a scanner and seeing what the issue is. Uh, it'll cause anything from a no start to a stalling, to smoking, to rough idle, rough running. And uh, that's generally the first thing that the, the guys will replace because it's cheapest. If it doesn't change anything, most likely you have an injection pump issue. It's about 1600 bucks to rebuild the pump. Uh, my engine guy tells me that usually the, the engines are done after about four or five hundred thousand K on it. Uh, they get sloppy, the valve stick, um, it's time for freshen up. So um, cheap enough to rebuild, nothing like a new injection system or common rail system or electronic uh, injectors. They're, uh, you get parts for them anywhere, but um, you can't really get a million miles off of this one like you would on a 12 valve Cummins, easy. Now, uh, there's three, uh, there's four different platforms for it. There's the pickup trucks, there's the Marine, there's the uh, vans, and there's the Humvees. And the difference between uh, most of them are the Marine are actually higher horsepower. They had, they were bored 20 thou larger than the pickup and, and the other applications, and they had a bigger injector nozzle. It dropped the compression from 21, 20 to one down to 18 to one, and uh, but put out over 200 horsepower, whereas the 20 to one compression only put out high 100s, 185, I believe. Uh, if you want to tune them, you can do that. Uh, putting a different turbo on it, even an HX35, will raise your boost from about 5 psi, which is stock, to about 20 psi. Really wake the engine up. But remember that you're probably going to blow a head gasket unless you stud it. There is stud kits for it and uh, better head gaskets that you can get for them. But um, like me, if you really want power, then go new and, and bite the bullet in your wallet. If you want something older and reliable, just kind of leave it alone and putting around. It's not a pulling engine. You won't go to any uh, uh, pull, pull shows that will all be 5.9 Cummins and Power Stroke diesels in there. They're not giant workhorses, but by using the marine injectors and a different turbo, you can wake up these engines. The Humvees and the vans have the turbo in a different location than the pickup trucks do. Um, that doesn't really matter anything, but if you're looking to do a conversion or something, just keep that in mind. Don't shy away from them either. I wouldn't buy one because I'm just as happy to throw a 12 valve into uh, a Chevy, good platform, best engine. And it's pretty well undisputed that the 12 valve comes is about as good as it gets. And that's why the 6.5 will never be as good as a 12 valve because 12 valves are in everything, including marine, off-road, uh, heavy equipment, 
industrial equipment and pickup trucks and buses and the list goes on and on so um that's my sense on the 6.5 please share your input on it a lot of guys are asking about the 6.5s um, i'm going a lot on the experience of my engine builders he's been around them all his life uh, i haven't seen as many as i have 12 valve cummins so if you guys can share your intelligent comments on what you've experienced if you're in a shop then other guys can can work off that too and uh, we can help each other out in diagnosing or helping each other out uh, if you want to buy it or whatever so thanks for watching guys here we go hey, hey thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you love the channel consider picking up a tape boss to make those projects go faster so you got more time to watch youtube and remember if you're not filthy you're not rich